Kat, this coming up being your final game with Athletes Unlimited and, and you know, your final professional game, what is coming to mind for you now as this is all starting to come nearer? That's a good question. I've kind of been, I have been in the middle of um, excitement, sadness, relief, um, you name it all. I think I felt a little bit all of it in the last 24, 48 hours. Um, you know, I, I'm excited in the fact that, you know, I feel like I, I have literally given all of myself to the sport. Um, it has taught me so much. It has given me so much in return that I, I couldn't expect anything else out of it. And so with that being said, um, knowing in my heart and my mind and physically that it's, it's time to be done, um, there's no regrets. And so um, there's a, there's a sadness in the fact that this has just literally been the love of my life for, for so many years. Um, and I am going to be walking away from physically playing it, but at the same time um, I'm excited for what I've put out on the field in the past, but also what's in store for the future. Um, you know, ready to turn a new page and, and just start kind of the next chapter of my life. Sure, understood, right? There's there's another side of life to what happens after the game, and you know, all athletes approach this and then have to figure out how to deal with it. Um, when did that decision come for you where you're like, this is a really good time, and I'm like at peace with the decision? Maybe as compared to a few years ago when you came, you know, out of retirement. Um. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing is, I mean, I knew when I came out of retirement, it was solely going to be for Tokyo. Um, and then when COVID, you know, hit and everyone had to quarantine and the games got delayed, um, playing in Athletes Unlimited season one became an opportunity that um, I reached out to have. And, and thankfully, they hadn't filled their roster and I was able to do that. And it was such an amazing experience that um, it was something that, you know, last October when we ended, I I had told John and Jonathan, I didn't know that the hardest decision of unretirement was going to be deciding whether I retired in August of 21 or in October of 21, um, because obviously I had the opportunity to go ahead and retire in Tokyo. And I really did thoroughly enjoy what Athletes Unlimited presented for us last year. And, um, you know, I just went home, talked to my husband and, you know, he was like, you had fun. That was some of the, you know, some of the most fun moments I think I've seen you had. I think you should do it again if your heart wants to. And, so I thought, I mean, I, I re-signed in January knowing that um, Athletes Unlimited Season 2 would be when I retired. Um, and part of that was because of the people that are here playing with me, um, helping run this this league. Um, it's just such a such a unique experience um, that I knew. I knew I wanted to be able to, to play here in the United States and allow, you know, family, friends and all that to be able to come watch one more time, especially when Tokyo did away with um, our family being able to travel over there. Um, but I knew, I knew in January when I re-signed with Athletes Unlimited that this would be, this is, would be where I ended my career. What do you enjoy most about playing in Athletes Unlimited, um, especially coming back for a second season? Yeah, I think the, the best part of it is every week you get to play with new people. Um, so, you know, there are, there are people that um, I never would have crossed paths with, that I never would have played with or against had I not chosen to participate in Athletes Unlimited. And, you know, that was true last year, but even more so now with the rookies that we have. Um, I, you know, had a great relationship with Deja Malipola on the national team, and we've been able to carry that over and play together for three weeks now here in Athletes Unlimited, mm -hmm. which has been fun. Um, but at the same time, you know, this week I'm playing for the first time with Amanda Lorenz and, and Kaylee Clifton, and, um, you know, just those are, those are athletes I wouldn't have had the opportunity to even get to know if I hadn't decided to take the leap and um, do this for a second season. You know, when as being the more experienced player in the league, uh, you know, to say, how, how are you handling that, that the little bit of that, that gap, right? That now, you know, they all look at you and know what you've done and you have this like kind of historical perspective over the game, having competed in the Olympics multiple times and, you know, all your accomplishments, you know, collegially and professionally. How have you handled that, you know, the last years? Cause I'm sure a lot of the women are coming up to you for, you know, advice about the game and now you're looking, you know, at them of like, Hey, I'm in a position, you know, now to give, what's that like for you? You know, I love talking the game. So if they ever ask, I'm a, a book of knowledge and I'm very willing to share. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of us are very confident in how we play the game. So there hasn't been a whole lot of conversation um, 
from them asking. Some of the pitchers will ask about certain right. hitters and setting up pitches and things like that, and, and I'll share. Um, you know, Odyssey Alexander was on my team for two weeks, and it was fun to be able to see her work, but then talk about, you know, she gave up a home run to Amanda Chittister, and she's like, I'm not going to throw that pitch again. I'm like, no, you can throw that pitch. It just has to be in a certain spot, and you have to set it up differently. Um, and so it's just been fun to talk the game with some of them. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think um, the age difference is sometimes – beneficial and sometimes not they obviously have people here that they grew up playing with and are friends with and have been friends with for a long time so mm. um quite often they're off doing things with the people that they know um versus trying to ask grandma about <laughs> softball <laughs> well you know i appreciate that you know you you could yeah have a set your you know humor about that because you know a lot of the people that you you came up with right aren't playing so i think in in that regard it's like a blessing right to still you know, have the opportunity to play. And what do you see for the future of Athletes Unlimited about the opportunities that it gives all these, you know, women a chance to play professionally, you know, here in the United States? You know, I don't know what their future plans are. Um, it obviously has been successful. Um, you know, even season one, I felt like when we couldn't have fans was a success as far as getting TV coverage and fans following it um, and the athletes buy in first and foremost. Cause you know, I think when you first posed it to a lot of us, um, you got quizzical looks like you want us to do what and change teams every week and what, and excuse me. Um, it was just different, but now that we're all in it, we love it. And um, fans have been able to, you know, enjoy it obviously in person this year. So I think it's, it's a platform that can, it can take off. I mean, I'm obviously they've already proven that they can, do it in other sports, but, um, you know, in the sport of softball, I think it's a perfect length of a season for us, especially when you face each other over and over. But, um, you know, maybe there'll be a, maybe in the future, there'll be a situation where it's uh, two seasons in a year or something like that. But um, it truly is a, an avenue where fans can follow their favorite player and not have to follow a certain team. Um, they can follow that player and know what that player is doing and each week and, and not having to necessarily go look up, you know, one team's information. You can follow your player and know mm -hmm. what they're doing and, and when they play and things like that. Yeah, that's definitely been something that's exciting. I know that's central to their focus across, you know, all the sports that they've run. You know, from being in the sport so long, um, I know it's grown tremendously on the youth side with travel ball and high school. Um, what do you think is maybe part of the recipe in general for, you know, the professional leagues in the United States, right, to, you know, to remain to remain solvent and grow? Well, you know, obviously there has I, the biggest thing is there has to be money. There has to be a backing for it. Um, unfortunately, you know, for softball, we didn't have that for our professional league, um, but UCWBA is supported by the NBA. And um, thankfully, Athletes Unlimited has found a way to make to make that work. Um, between John Petrikoff and Jonathan Soros being able to um, have the funding for these leagues to be able to continue and sustain. But um, I think the other thing is they've, they found partners that, that are working. Mm -hmm. um, Gatorade being on this season as a sponsor is huge. Um, you know, Hyper Ice continuing to be able to be a sponsor. And not only, I don't know what they do, obviously financially with the business side of Athletes Limited, but just even donating or giving the product for us to be able to recover and be at our best the next day, those kind of things. Um, it's been great. So I think they're doing what they need to do to try to, to try to get the partners and the brands to, to back it. Um, and hopefully in the future, it, it continues to be something that they can sustain. Sure. Um, you know, the sponsors are, are duly important and, you know, many of the athletes have, you know, told me the same across the other sports that, you know, I've spoken with this year. Um, Speaking on the finance piece, because this is about Forbes, and I always like to tie this in because I feel like the general public may not be, you know, as aware of it. Um, can you speak to like the finance side on your end as like an athlete of kind of what the, you know, the salaries look like and, um, you know, how you manage that? Because I think sometimes it's something that doesn't get talked about enough, but I think for the the public, like if they do have some knowledge, right, you know, they may have so much like, hey, wait, there's something going on that the numbers are, you know, uh, off here. But yeah, what are you willing to share maybe about like, okay, what does a year look like for, you know, Kat Osterman or, or um, you know, in, in terms of how you play in, you know, the salaries here versus, you know, being on the national team and then, you know, working with your sponsors as well? 
Well, I mean, it varies person to person, so sure. I can't really give you an average. Um, and it also varies year to year. So, I mean, athletes and limited that were anywhere on a base salary from, I think, 8,000 to 15,000, depending on, um, you know, where they, where they put you on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, you know, your, your play earns you a bonus nice. and you take that bonus home. So, um, you know, it, is it great for five weeks? Yes. Is it sustainable for the whole year? No, not really. Um, and I think as athletes, you know, <laughs> there, there's not a salary for the national team. Um, again, year to year, it depends what if the Olympic years are stipend, so to speak, is a yeah. little higher than, than others, but it's not, it's not something you can live off of by any means. So, um, you know, I think professional softball players are still having to have other jobs, do clinics, lessons, things like that in order to be able to afford to be a professional athlete. We're not at the point where, um, very many, if any, can just be a professional athlete and not have to do other things to supplement our income. Sure. A lot of the volleyball players, you know, told me the same, especially the ones that played on the beach side. It's almost like an identical answer where it's like, you know, we have to do things outside of the sport. And, you know, both of those sports are growing so tremendously. I hope that, you know, we reach a point as we, you know, move forward, right, that, you know, people who want to pursue this professionally, right, can do so as like, no, you know, my job is to play, right? And I hope that, you know, we're able to, uh, you know, get there one day. Um, speaking of the Olympics, you know, you, you, your team had an incredible run. You know, it came really close, and you know, in the finals. Um, looking back at that now that you've had, you know, some time. I was reading an article you did with ESPN a few years back, and you know, saying how you know after you got the silver the previous time before that, that like you kind of you know was it was eating at you for a bit, and then you had to realize like, hey, how many people actually get to have, you know, a silver medal, um, you know, not having like a second shot at it and now having some time, you know, away from it. Uh, what's your, you know, take on that whole experience, you know, having come back, you know, to compete in Tokyo, especially with the delay? Um, I mean, I think we were all grateful that we had the opportunity to compete again, um, not only because of the delay, but just the sport of softball getting back into the Olympics was huge. Um, and I think it was really something that a lot of fans followed. Uh, whether you were a softball fan or not, I think, um, you know, the sport itself was picked up and promoted in a, in a way that um, allowed a lot of people to see how great of a sport it is. It was the most competitive Olympics, I think, a group of a teams have put together um, since we were in, since we were put into the Olympics in 96. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so it's, I think it's more global than people realize, and they might have seen that in within the six teams that were there. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's a disappointment. We're not in the next one, and we're going to have to continue fighting for, for that right. Um, but it was an incredible run. It was an incredible journey. Obviously, um, a gold medal was what we were had our eyes on. Um, didn't happen, um, you know, and I was able to probably process it a little faster than everyone else had I have, having gone through it already before. But, um, you know, at the same time, my brother was really quick to remind me not only are you a three-time Olympian, you're a three-time medalist, and not very many people can say that either. And, um, you know, it's one of those when you think on it, you're like, that is pretty cool. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty um, unique situation. And so as much as a gold medal would have been amazing, um, the, the, the journey itself was incredible. Um, the group of athletes I got to play with are incredible people. Um, and I am just, blessed that I was able to be able to come back and, and make that journey. Um, I wish it would have ended for a gold medal with a gold medal for the, the, the teammates that were first time Olympians. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, I'm, I'm glad it ended on the podium, um, regardless. Sure. Right. And I think that's, that's a perspective of, like you said, having been there, you know, a few times and, and knowing that teams got in and, you know, didn't medal and, um, yeah, you know, we'll see what, what, 2028, right? It's like, wait, we're in one, right? You know, like push the number forward, you know, brings for, uh, you know, USA softball. Um, one other thing, you know, as part of like my column, we look at like trading cards and, um, you know, you've had a chance to be featured on multiple Tops cards. I know you had one in Allen and Ginter some years ago. Uh, Tops put out an Olympic set this year. Uh, they're doing sets for athletes unlimited. What's what's that like for you when you first saw yourself, uh, you know, on a on a card? And now that you have a few out there, you know, what's what's that like for you to you know actually have an official multiple trading cards of yourself? Well, I think most of the funny part is you don't really know when you're on a card unless it's in a complete set like AU um, <laughs> promotes. So 
a lot of times I don't know that there's cards out there until people ask me to sign them. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's still cool. Um, you know, I, I grew up collecting baseball cards. Um, and then when the WNBA launched, um, I have actually the first, I think two seasons, complete sets of cards. Um, so, you know, I know what it's like to be able to collect those cards. And I know as a female athlete, what it's like to be able to see your heroes on that, that those cards. So, it's really cool. I'm glad that, you know, card companies are embracing female athletes and putting it out there because I think every athlete, whether, whether you're a boy or a girl, you should be able to go see your heroes, collect what it is, you know, the, the players that you want to be like, you should be able to collect their cards and get the facts that are on the back of them and things like that. So um, just super excited to, uh, to be on those and it, it's cool anytime I think they come up with some really good graphics and different things they put on the backs and different information and whatnot so it's always fun to see those cards and um just be able to to be part of that yeah and it's awesome to hear you know that you had you know collected it at some point so it kind of you know brings the whole you know circle kind of uh 360 I know you alluded to it earlier in the call um you know for what you kind of want to do afterwards which is just there you know there's a next chapter what do you foresee yourself doing, you know, now that the playing side is, you know, g- going to be behind you? Yeah. Um, well, right now I have taken a job as director of softball for my cause, which is RBI Austin. Um, I will be designing and implementing and running a player development academy for seventh graders, seventh grade and up um, softball players. to so hopefully give them an avenue to train and hopefully learn not only skills, but what it takes to compete at a college level to where if that's their dream, they'll be prepared for it. Um, We serve an underserved community in Austin. And so um, just being able to allow those girls another avenue of softball that hopefully can help them, you know, make ways um, in their life. So that'll be my actual initial job. Um, I got my real estate license last fall. So I have that. I'll be doing some real estate with my husband. Um, and I also work with a travel organization um, called Bombers Fast Pitch as their pitching director. So I will also be kind of coaching with them some, but um, I'll be done playing. I'll still be around the sport just in a different capacity, um, but really looking forward to um, working with my cause, RBI Austin, and that nonprofit being able to just help the softball side of that grow. You know, in New York, we're here in New York City, and, you know, I'm noticing, right, the, the gap, right, in terms of, you know, cost and access. So to hear that you're getting involved with like an RBI organization, right, I, I think is is awesome because like there's a lot of kids I think that maybe have untapped talent, but, you know, what's holding them back is is the costs. You know, what do you see from being on that side, you know, working with like travel organizations in terms of like trying to mitigate the cost because they've really taken off and boxed some kids out that, you know, could potentially be like, talented players but you know they they can't afford it um to be honest i i haven't been around the travel world enough right right. now Um, i i work inside our our facility and i pretty much just do pitching stuff so i haven't been in the travel world to see it all i mean i obviously know it's an expensive it's an expensive sport i mean you have gloves bats you name it um and i think it goes along with baseball as well but i think there are there are a lot of organizations that are now offering or trying to find ways to help um, alleviate the costs or be able to donate used equipment mm. or, um, you know, Bat Club USA has your subscription to where if you outgrow your bat or you don't like it, you can send it back and get a new one. And if sure you have to pay something, but it's still not the full cost of a bat. Um, and so I think there's just different, there's different avenues for people to be able to play the game, but at the same time, uh, we have to have people, especially on the softball side, that are willing to invest their knowledge into those same um, athletes. And I think that's the biggest thing with softball right now is, again, you know, most of us have to, <laughs> we have to have a job to make ends meet while we're mm-hmm. playing, but we have to have a job once we retire too. And so um, if you don't choose an avenue that allows you to, to pour that knowledge into those athletes, um, sometimes they're getting it, you know, just from dads or baseball players and not that they can't coach softball because they can, but um, you know, a girl wants to hear from a softball player. I'm not going to lie. It's, you, you want that knowledge from somebody who's been there and done 